All right, yo, what is up everybody? I am Legend, and in today's episode of Track Out Tuesday, I'm going to be breaking down the instrumental to Ariana Grande's new song, Bloodline, from her new album, Thank You, Next, and how I made it from scratch in Machine Mark III. Let's go. So right off the bat, getting started with this song, uh, Ariana Grande's Bloodline is driven heavily by horns and live drums and instrumentation and things like that. So um, it is a little bit difficult to replicate those sounds, but there are ways to replicate this sound. So starting off with the main instruments to the song that drive the entire song, as I always do, that would be the trumpets. I believe in the actual song itself, it is a sample. I obviously don't know where the sample came from. I didn't bother to look. I was just trying to get this song pumped out as fast as possible. So I basically went into machine in trying to replicate the sound in the original instrumental i had to choose a bunch of different horns and layer them all together so in this uh, remake i stacked up six different trumpet horn sections to achieve different sounds that would be trumpet ensemble stack 2x trumpet ensemble stack 3x trumpet ensemble sustain x and that is for the longer held out notes a trumpet sforzando i think that's how you pronounce it a trumpet stack 1 plus 2x and another trumpet stack 2x goodness gracious that is a lot of trumpet I used three of those to basically play the exact same chord, uh, chords that are going on in the song. And um, I came up with this right here. And as you'll notice, it actually has a bit of a, a delay. I added a, a filter to it to kind of mute the sound a little bit so it, it's not... Uh, one of those blaring like like you know how a trumpet sounds when you push really hard it's more of a muted sound and then I added a beat delay so that it does have that echo that kind of mimics what the original song has once I got that down packed I wanted to add some accents to the downbeat so the so there's these little accents that I feel are very important to the, the nuance kind of in the vibe of the song. So I went ahead with a, one of the other trumpet sounds that I got. I played that on top of what was already looping and I got this sound here. So when you're recreating these types of live instrumentation or you know making your own song that has live instrumentation you want to think about how this person would play this if it was in real life uh, you don't want everything like full force because people have to take breath so it's going to tire out a little bit if you want to make it sound as real as possible you have to copy those nuances to the best of your abilities and that's what i tried to do here going on with those nuances there is a part where the trumpet holds out for a more sustained more legato note and um so i went with the, the trumpet sustain that i found it's these two accent like hard hitting like very short trumpet sounds and then come in with those two other ones that hold it out and it's not a dun, it's not a hard accent it's not a uh, you know, an attack and a, and a flay, it's just a and you'll see what that sounds like right here. I could have just went with the basic uh, trumpet ensemble and just played all of this out on one thing, but it would have all sounded exactly the same and not like an actual quartet or trumpet section was playing. So that's why I have these different trumpet selections to mimic different sounds because you obviously can't get that with just one selected instrument in these apps. They're all separated into into different categories so that you can pick and choose, you know, you want a muted sound here, you want a, a forte sound here, you want a crescendo here, one that fades in or decrescendo gets quiet, things like that. So in trying to mimic the whole sound in this uh, instrumental, I couldn't exactly copy how the horn sounded. I wasn't really happy with the trumpet, how they sounded in comparison to the original. So I tried to add some, some little accents. I put uh, some staccato strings in there um, to kind of help accent those very short uh, trumpets in the, in the long one as well. So I added a staccato string and another sustained string to basically copy the same vibe that I was going with with the trumpets. And you know, it doesn't sound exactly the same, but it does add character that was missing, I felt, I felt, me personally. So next up was the bass and I wanted to go, I knew I wanted to go immediately with a fretless bass, um, something that was a little bit more natural and not something analog or something that sounded 
processed but something that somebody's actually playing so i went with the fretless bass in contact and i layered it with the bass that i always use which is feedback bass but i turned that one down a little bit so that it has more of that natural feel to it but it was just to add fullness to that that fretless bass because whenever i use that bass it just feels a little bit lacking to me it's not as deep as i wanted it to be i layer it with that bass and i play out the foundation of the bass part which sounds like this <laughs> And once again, I had to layer these basses with some synth driven basses. Um, one I found in rounds and one I found in Monarch and that is All About which is found in rounds and Alligator Bass which is found in Monarch. These two basses they serve the, the specific and sole purpose of basically making the bass sound more like a synth because there is that element to the verses especially when those come up you can really hear how synthy the bass sounds in the original song but it's not so synthy that it still doesn't have that uh, fretless feel to it so I put that all together and it sounds like this and you'll notice how these synth basses also act as accents to what the original bass is doing so it's just those three notes dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. so there's really a lot of uh, play on that those first three hits, the accents, they're very important to this song. Now for the drum patterns, this was a very simple thing to do. Um, base, your basic 808 kit, the hi-hat, the open hat, the kick, and the uh, snare. Now the cool thing about the song is it does have a little bit of what I like to call like an island type vibe. It's that kind of like a calypso type type thing. It gives you even more island vibes. So it's that so I had to add in some synths right here to give it that extra vibe, kind of play with that rhythm. There's two synths called Herbie and Bender and an Old and Far Away that I used from Massive. And then there's a jazz guitar that I put in there, actually two jazz guitars. One is playing as an accent like And then the synths and the other guitar are basically hitting those rhythmic I You'll hear it. And then once the end of this part comes in and it's getting back into the chorus, um, it's repeating this part over and over again. And it's got another uh, little addition that brings you back into the chorus, which is like this cool little drum fill, drum loop. Sort of a mix between live instrumentation, live drums, and like uh, really old 90s, 80s type uh, toms that come in, the do do do, like them synthesizer drums. So I tried my best to mimic the sound and mimic the fill itself and uh, the different instrumentations that I found. And when it comes to these fills, you don't always have to be exactly on point as the original, or it has to have this exact same rhythm to it. Like you can do whatever you want. It'll still have the same effect. Um, but mine sounds a little something like this. And then you come back in for the chorus, you bring all the instrumentation back in and it gives you uh, the finished product that, you know, repeats itself. Chorus, verse, chorus, verse, bridge, blah, 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 blah. You know how to, you know the deal, but everything comes in for the chorus and it sounds like this. I mean, it's very hard to explain. Uh, it's very hard to explain my process for selecting these instruments, especially when it comes to live instrumentation, and explaining how I hear things and how to bring that live feel across when you're literally playing all this stuff just here in your room, but trying to make it sound like a big orchestra. But hopefully, you learned something from this. I know this video wasn't the most in depth, but um, I do have to pack. Actually, <laughs> I got all this stuff here because. 
tomorrow I will be leaving um, for this tour. So, but I, I wanted to make sure that I shot this, this video, edit it tonight before I leave for tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching as always. Um, appreciate this person right here for subscribing, leaving a comment, letting me know they love the videos. Truly, truly appreciate it. All the support that you guys showed is amazing. Shout out to my patrons as always. If you guys wanna join my Patreon down below, the link is there. Um, as always, stay legendary, be legendary. And I'll see you on this tour, man. I'm gonna try maybe to daily vlog or vlog if I can. If not, you'll at least see one next Sunday. But um, appreciate you guys. Love you and peace out.